Thank you very much, Aaron. I am genuinely humbled and honored. Uh, I can think of so many alums either who preceded me or graduated subsequent to my graduation, who in my view would be far more qualified to receive this acknowledgement. So it affects me deeply and I'm, I'm honored and proud to be the first recipient of this award. That was largely a family decision. My father, my father was a was a surgeon, and at a very tender age, I would accompany him when he made his rounds at the hospital, and then he would often take me to see his post-op patients when he made house calls. My father was a throwback and believed in making house calls back then, and I went along, I'm not going to say lovingly, but I went along um, eagerly just to, to see the interaction between my father and his patients. And quite candidly, um, that was a factor in my decision to go into healthcare. My early thought was to perhaps be a physician. And then I, I spent one summer when I was still an undergraduate um, working in a hospital and realized then that I, my interest really lay more in the administrative side and less in the clinical side. And then having made that decision, the, the process which led me to, to, to Sloan was, a, was an obvious one to me. I wanted one that offered a, a more meaningful academic experience, not just one year, and also was housed in a university whose resources were extensive and expansive. And I think the Cornell program offered, they met those requirements um, in spades on both scores. So it was a very worthwhile move on my part. Well, the, the model that inspired me was, was my dad. And he only, being a typical general surgeon, he only had one way of doing things. And that was obviously either his way or, or no other way. And his way invariably was the right way. And the right way in his view was, the, was both the ethical way, the moral way, and the right way for the patients involved. So I think if I had a singular moment be hard to carve out, but if I had a singular moment, it was when I moved to Connecticut and set about the task of opening up my first freestanding ambulatory surgery center. And that was back in the days when there were no regulations, no licensing requirements, no accreditation. But I knew from my background, and I knew based on things that were important to me, that there was only one correct way to set up the first facility in the state of Connecticut. And that was the above, above reproach, so that even though there were no regulations, even if there had been, we would be able to meet and surpass any requirements that anybody would impose on us. And that, that model has stayed with me throughout my career. And as I began to open up surgical centers across the country, and frankly, even in China, where I had an opportunity to do some work, that was still the pervasive mindset that, that drove me to, to behave the way that I've always behaved when doing business. I wanted to be able to not just make a mark, but really affect people's lives qualitatively as well as quantitatively, and being able to reach out and set the standard for care where there had been no previous standards was both a wonderful opportunity it was an opportunity, and I viewed it as a responsibility at the same time, as one of the early pioneers in that field, to be able to demonstrate the value and the worth of this new, mo new modality, one that I think has stood the industry in very good stead.
Thank you very much. Well, I, I continue to believe strongly that healthcare is a wonderful, exciting field loaded with opportunities. Opportunities not, not just in traditional employment, but to strike out and pursue new ventures, what with gene splicing and all kinds of other approaches, uh, genomics, and a variety of opportunities to carve out new administrative and business opportunities. I, I think it's a wonderful field to, to pursue, and I would encourage any young person who wanted to feel, wanted, was not afraid of hard work and wanted to pursue something that would have the ability to make them feel genuinely good, I would encourage them all to, as much as possible, strengthen their communication skills, both verbally and in writing, because I think in any field of endeavor, endeavor the ability to communicate effectively is critical to any success. And I think having the opportunity to use those skills to inspire people, inspire the clinicians you work with, inspire board members, and I think a lot of attention in the future needs to be paid on dealing with board members of healthcare facilities, not just because of transparency, but the boards bear the responsibility for setting the vision and seeing to it that there is appropriate execution. So I think the responsibility is doubly on their shoulders. And I think they have to remember that they're running a specialized endeavor, not just their typical business that they may have left behind. This is a unique opportunity to be special about what you're doing and to look forward with great pride in what you've accomplished. And I think not enough people view it that way. Well, don't be afraid to ask as many questions. There's no such thing as a stupid question when you're starting a career. And when you get to that point where you're employing people, always employ people that are brighter than you, who are not afraid to challenge you, not afraid to say no to you, if you come up with something that they don't think is workable or appropriate. You don't want to just hire somebody like a best friend because he, is the best, he or she is the best friend if all they're going to do is agree with everything you say that they're not doing themselves any good, and they're not doing the institution any good. I think you need to be able to challenge every idea that comes up, whoever sponsors the idea, and then to evaluate it with great skepticism and great, um, and great passion. And passion is a word that I, when I used to lecture the students, I always used a lot. And passion is something that has to be genuine. You can't create an artificial passion about what you're doing but you've, it helps if you can feel awfully good about what you've chosen to do and let that translate into an emotion that helps drive and guide you at the same time. I think the present value of Sloan is very much what it was when I was a student. Um, where it's located, I think it's positioning, the kind of academic rigors of its program I think are wonderful. Having an opportunity to access different components throughout the university I think is very important. And I would encourage students to do that. One of the things that meant the most to me during my days, my early days as an alum, was the time that I spent with students and going up to campus and meeting with them and getting to know them and establishing a mentoring program I think everybody can benefit from a mentor, including the mentors themselves. And I think it's a wonderful opportunity for that kind of interaction.
Aaron, thank you so much, really. It's, it's a, a genuine honor, and I'm humbled to be the recipient of the inaugural award. It means so much to me. And I thank you and the, and the board for, for this vote of confidence.